Good morning from Panhandle Outdoors with Winston Chester. Panhandle Outdoors, your source for fishing, hunting, and information for folks who enjoy the great outdoors. Now sit back, relax. It's Panhandle Outdoors. Good morning, folks. Welcome to Panhandle Outdoors in Winston Chester. Glad to hear this Tuesday morning. We're getting all the way halfway through of June, and it's going to be July before I know it. But first, our weather brought to us by Haney Technical Center at the corner of Baldwin Road and Highway 77. It's going to be hot, hot all week. It's going to be high today, 91. Tomorrow's going to be high, 92, low 78. And water temperature now is jumping on up to 84 degrees. It don't get too much more warmer than that. It'll get a little bit more, but this water temperature is in great shape. Take a look at our uh, river readings. The, both rivers are in good shape. The Appalachian coal is level out. I mean, I've heard some good reports. Uh, everything's biting down there, including still a bunch of yellow flies. I'm still getting reports that the yellow flies are still bad around the river, but uh, it's reading a 6.2 this morning in the Choctahatchee at Carryville. It's, read, it's dropping out a little bit. The Appalachian Coast is staying level, but the Choctahatchee is reading a 7 foot this morning, and it's in good shape. Looking Thursday is going to be really good, too. Our tie chart brought to us by Kent Forest Lawn Funeral Home and Cemetery, and their motto is when carrying counts. Take a look at today's tide, the 17th of two. Good, strong tides today and a little bit tomorrow, but now in the next three days, Thursday, Friday, and Saturday, we're going, to have, we're going to get into those neat tides, so not a lot of tidal flow this weekend, so be aware of that and make your outdoor plans, okay? Now, let's take a look at our marine forecast. It's going to be coming west-northwest at about 5 to 10. It's going to be varying around. It's going to come a little bit out of the east, a little bit out of the north, and then it's going to settle down at west-northwest, so the wind's not going to be a big factor today if you're out on the water, all right? We'll take our break and be right back. All right, folks, welcome back. We're getting our picture set up. Glad you're with us this morning. Got all kinds of pictures to catch up on. So we'll get started. Our first shot here. This is 90 years old. Bill Buchanan sent a picture of his dad and uh, still fishing. That's out of the past. And Mr. Buchanan, I'm, I'm glad to see you still fishing at 90 years old. Great shot there, Bill Buchanan. All right, moving along. Howard Farrow, a good trout fisherman in his own right. Nice trout there. He's had a little, I believe that was our Cold Boys tournament over there. Didn't get the results from him. I know Howard did well, though. Good tournament there. Okay, next one. Move on over. This would be Russell Sims fishing up at Lake Seminole. Some nice, healthy-looking trout right there. Uh, nice mess of fish. This is, uh, Brian Revere, principal there at Vernon High School. He had he and Brett Brown. They were uh, catching. All these came out of West Bay. Some nice West Bay trout and speckled 
I mean a redfish and speckled trout. Carolyn Poole. Okay, Carolyn Poole here, a nice fish. Carolyn's a good fish lady. Good job, Carolyn. Okay, you may not can see this. I may just go over it later with I don't know if you see it. Just shows the average uh, bass. I uh, doing some research on bass growth. I was doing some questions on it. So after about five years, they're about 17 inches long. We'll talk more about that later. Our buddy Steve Petty, the Big Ben Saltwater Classic. You can see on the uh, background there, they have all kind of categories. And, and we uh, our own, and now they started this way out down there around uh, off the coast of Walcala, and Carabelle has a good uh, moorings there, down there, and uh, they have a good weigh-in station, but it's spread on up to where St. Joe Marina has a weigh-in station, so a few folks up here are entering the Big Ben Classic, and Steve Petty is with that, got that red grouper there. Folks, that grouper is like 29, red grouper, 29.8 pounds. We're going to round off to a 30-pound red grouper. That, that's the first place red grouper out there, and he won, he won it in second place now, was actually uh, 11 pounds, so that's how much he won it by. Good job, Steve Pitt. I got another picture there I'll show you later, but uh, now let's move on to mullet fishing here in the Florida Panhandle this past weekend. Uh, okay, as Junior Kelly, uh, throwing his uh, wife, uh, Pam Peterson Kelly, takes a lot of pictures, does a good job with them, and uh, this was his father-in-law, Larry Peterson taught Junior how to throw that net, but that's a good good picture and a good cast, and Junior's always catching a lot of mullet. Okay, I just thought it's a special here. I, I, somebody, they sent this to me. Uh, they, this is a, what, what's good about it? Tracy Sanders, uh, his wife, Dallas Shaw Sanders, got him, she got him a six-month anniversary present. Isn't that nice? But look what she got. Got him a copy of Full Box for the six-month anniversary. I, I wrote back and told uh, Tracy, I believe Dallas is going to be a keeper. That's really nice to uh, to share that with us. Uh, Dallas Shaw, and uh, well, she was Dallas Shaw. She married Tracy Sanders, so now it's Dallas Shaw Sanders. So I thought that was a great present right there. Mandy Miller with a dad, Mike Miller, with a bay, caught what I say, a bay, straight water red snapper. All right, good job, Mandy. i got to get Mandy back on the show. All right, this is an O-Search I was telling you all about. Look at the top of the screen, O-Search. If you want to start looking it up, I, want, I, I talked about this about a year and a half ago. I looked at my notes. About a year and a half ago, I talked about O-Search tagging these great white sharks and, and monitoring them all along, uh, all over the world, but mainly right here in Florida. They tag, tagged them up there at uh, Cape Cod, in the upper right-hand corner. But the one everybody's concerned about, or excited about, I guess, is that one right there south of Panama City. That's, she's called Catherine. She's... 14, uh, she's 20, let's see, she's a, still a juvenile, 14 foot long and 2,300 pounds. Uh, still a, uh, not quite grown yet, but she's headed straight into St. Andrew Bay. I said this last, to tell my grandson Mason about it, when she was way down there off Sarasota. And sure enough, she, she uh, you can see, here's her path right here. Look at her path. When she was way down, when she made went eastward down there, I said, Mason, she's going to head for Panama City. Now, last uh, a day or two ago, she made a little jog west, but uh, she's directly south of us. So don't let the Tourist Development Council find out about this. They will have heart attacks out there. It'll be like the movie Jaws. All right, let's move on. My buddy from Valdosta, Tony Bass, just got in, just got in over the weekend. He's spending the whole week. That was spend the uh, second week of June, a vacation at Cape San Blast, his first trip out, a 30-pound King Michael. Tony, you need to save that one for the big tournament down there. All right, a great picture here. Milton Prescott sends this of his granddaughter, Vanessa. This is her first mahi-mahi, and they're fishing down at uh, Key Largo. Great picture right there. Thank you, Milton. Up there in Graceville, watches Panhandle Outdoors on a regular basis. Now, this one's uh, a, a Panhandle boy, but he's fishing up in Montana. Shepherd Ellisor, son of Kim Purdue Ellisor. They're spending about a week up there fly fishing. And Jeff, that looks like fun, don't it, buddy? Uh, I'm, that's one of my, uh, I'm going to do that one day, go up to Montana and fish up there where they film the river runs through it. But good job, Shepard. He's growing, he's got on a lot of boots, uh, a lot of tall boots there. All right, here's that picture of Steve Petty's a, a red grouper. He donated it to a local charity down there, but that's a first place prize. I believe you won $1,000 on that. I don't know if you can read this. I'm just going to share this with you. Maybe I can read it. It said, uh, we had a couple. This comes from Robin Conyers. Uh, remember, uh, I, on the show last week, I had uh, the, Mr. Conyers, her, her, her father-in-law, 
uh, Reggie Conyers and, and then his buddy Tony from Tallahassee that invented the uh, spring in the, in the pole called, uh, that, uh, what do you call that, Jeff? Dad Dad gum pole, that dad gum pole. And uh, they went up to Rick and uh, Bubba's show this past weekend, and, and Robin sent me a note. And I, I, you can't read it right here, but I go and read it to you. He said, I uh, just want you to know uh, we had a couple, they're in a booth up in Birmingham now. And Robin said, we, we just had a couple come by our booth in Birmingham and said they came especially for our polls. They saw Donnie on your TV show. So that made us feel really good. And, and uh, I uh, texted her back to say, ask how the show was going. She said they had a really good show up there and people were really excited about that dadgum poll. So, uh, okay, let's move on with our picture. We're going to get behind. Let's see. This is uh, just an old throwback picture. Uh, this is the late Charlie Dial. He used to be the principal there. He worked in the school system a long time. Principal there, Lucille Moore. Charlie Dial, the daughter, uh, Darlene, was on Father's Day, sent this picture to him. But boy, isn't that some nice, healthy looking? His granddaughter, Skipper Salzman. Skipper was in my outdoor class. And I was talking about how granddad loved fishing. The, the late Charlie Dial there. Okay. All right, now, coming out of, coming out of Carabelle. This is a Richie and Johnny. Lenert, uh, let's see, L-E-H-N, Lenert, and their dad uh, is Rich, and their mom is Carrie, and they had a great fishing trip right there, all right? And let's see, the last, last picture, this is coming from Mitch Coleman. Mitch Coleman sending this in. Uh, this is a special young man from LaGrange, Georgia. His name is Chevy Jones, A-16, caught this nice red snapper in state waters abo aboard the Floridays on Tuesday. This was his first trip. He paid close attention to directions and caught this fish on his second drop. Good job there uh, for young man Chevy Jones, age 16. Okay, and this was the, the picture I showed you, the story I told you last week about the retired Lieutenant Colonel Reed Smith up there in Niceville sending that long, really nice uh, detailed letter about his dad in the center there would come down from Louisville as a teenager and uh, hopped the train and come down from Louisville and Red Snapper fish down here. And uh, now that's, uh, the, he's Reed, uh, Reed Smith the first is in the middle, Reed Smith the second on the far left, and Reed Smith the third on the far right. They're still enjoying fishing in Florida. So uh, great job there. Okay, that catches up, that catches up on our, on our pictures. Some great pictures, all variety of all kinds of pictures too. So let's go take this break and we'll be right back. Okay, welcome back. Uh, one of the viewers over the uh, Father's Day weekend, a lot, of the, a lot of the books sold over Father's Day, and there was a viewer down there that had been down to Blue Water Outrigger, and they 
asked three different people. They could not find the book. It is that blue water. It's sort of hard to find. You come in the door. It's oh, way over in the latest section with all those clothes. It's on a table by the window. I had to look for it. When I went in there last time, I, I looked all over the store, but finally, and I asked some people, and this lady asked three different people, and they didn't know anything about it, so I apologize for that. The book is at Blue Water, but it's, uh, and they moved it. it was over, it's over on the far left, over in the ladies' clothes, and so ask for, uh, uh, you know, just keep asking for it, and ask, ask for uh, Miss Hilda, if she's around there, she'll certainly find it for you, so we apologize for that, and uh, it, they do have some down there, all right? Also, now, I want to mention... Uh, Long Bach, just called, on the fishing tournament this weekend. It's going to be a big deal up there, folks, June the 21st and 22nd. They're going to give, you know, Long was on the show last week with paying out three prizes per hour, $850 an hour, 500 first, then 250 then 100 I just got a call from him. They're, uh, uh, they're going to have a country band. They're going to have a free concert up there at, at the Seminole Landing at, on that Saturday night. I don't know the name of the band yet, but they're going to be, I'm sure it'll be a good band. And they'll be playing up there Saturday night. So there'll be all kind of folks up there and uh, just a good uh, good fun and all. So get a chance to go up there and check it out. I'm going to try to get up there and, and watch a little bit of it. I just don't know if I can, but don't forget that. Now, let's look at the uh, uh, next thing on, on my agenda. We I showed this about two years ago, this little three-minute video on how to tie a blood knot. And tying a blood knot is, is one of the most important knots. That's when you're tying two strings together. Uh, if you've seen it before, uh, it was about 520-something shows ago. So if you remembered it, that's great. If not, it's going to uh, summertime's a great time. I always thought of summertime just a great time to just, you know, it was too hot to go outside and all. Uh, you know, inside, you can practice tying knots and all. It's just important that an outdoorsman knows a lot of knots. And if you want to have fun, get some simple knots and get together with some little, with some smaller uh, kids and all, let them just try to tie some knots. They get tickled. They really get tickled when they successful. So uh, let's uh, on how to tie a blood knot. So let's go ahead and run this one, Jeff. Hi, right, folks. Today I'm out of my garage. I'm in my little place. I call my tackle corner. I got all my junk here. A lot of times I like to come out here and just peel around and do stuff. I was thinking I want to show y'all how to tie some knots. I, I'm just going to do one at, at a time. But we're going to start off today on a blood knot. Now, I teach knot tying to my outdoor ed class. Uh, we spend about three three days on a little knot tying unit. And, uh, I've learned over the years the best way to teach knot tying is you don't uh, hold it out in front of you and try to teach somebody because everything's reversed. So we, I'm going to let the camera come in from behind me. And also, you don't use monofilament line or braided line in teaching somebody how to tie a knot. I, over the years, I've de developed this little lesson plan where I just show them in different colors and all. And I really let the kids teach each other too. So. Today we're going to talk about a blood knot. Uh, that's a very important knot in outdoors. It, that's when you're tying two lines together. So let's give it a try. I've got these two different colors laying right here on my bench. And what I'm going to do now, the blood knot, hopefully you can see this. And what you want to do is get plenty of it to work with and overlap it like this. Okay, what I'm going to do now, I've got the two lines laying down. I'm going to get up both lines and I'm going to hold both of them between my thumb and forefinger of my left hand. I'm going to wrap this around five times, okay? One, two, three, four, five. Now I'm going to take what I have left, okay, what you call a tag in, that's right there to the right, and bring it right here through this little loop I formed, okay? That's all I'm going to do right there. Now I'm going to, what I'm going to do with this other color line, I'm going to wrap it five times. I'm going to switch hands. I'm ambidextrous. One, okay, two, three, four, five. And this little loop I have right here, where I have it through here, okay, I'm going to bring it back through the same way with the lime color line. All right, and then I'm gonna just grab the ends, both ends I've taken through there, okay, and then just gonna pull it. Start tightening it up, okay. You can watch it; it's really cool to watch it tighten up. A lot of times you have to hold the line though, so it won't get too come all the way out. But see, it start tightening up, okay. So now I'm gonna hold it right here, tighten this end right here, tighten this end right here. And it starts pulling together, okay? And it'll end up just like, look at there, that's a pretty knot in it, okay? That's a blood knot. Now that, that ain't coming apart, I promise you, okay? Now, I always take, I got some scissors over here. I always trim the 
trim the ends a little bit okay and then after you cut it it's going to end up looking looking like this right here okay like I said good and tight and really neat line and you can just cut up how much tab you want okay that's called a blood knot Right, welcome back. Glad you're with us Tuesday morning. Let's take a look at our fishing game forecast brought to us by Mark Coward of Edgewater Beach Realty, number 8326000. And we're looking at our times uh, this morning from 4.43 to 6.43 uh, right now, really. And then this afternoon from 5.09 to 7.09. I like this kind of pattern here because you can do this really early morning and late in the afternoon. You can hit this twice. Sometimes when it's at midnight, 1 a.m., a lot of us on up, okay? I want to, uh, we mentioned this the other day, and uh, Stan, Stan Kirkland also mentioned it about the sturgeon, but uh, be aware of it because about one year ago, to, in fact, June 22nd last year, that eight-year-old boy up in Youngstown uh, was, was seriously injured in his family fishing trip when the leaping sturgeon hit him in the boat. You remember we went over that story and talked about it and all. Uh, I got an email from them, U.S. Fish and Wildlife uh, they do, they do extensive work, and we've had Frank Peruca. I've been with him a couple of times, if you remember. We've gone out there uh, with some of the students, and we've helped on a sturgeon count, and Frank is probably the sturgeon expert in, in, in the whole, uh, whole United States, really, and, and they ask him about a lot of questions. He's retired, and I thought we'd be out of contact with him. But now he has come back on, on board, I believe, working as a contra sort of contracting, and I'm going to uh, get back with him. But uh, I want to read you the, the estimates, what they estimate the sturgeon population in the rivers in, in our, our area. Okay, estimates the sturgeon population in the Choctatcha Bay, is, I mean, sorry, Choctatcha River is 3,500. Okay, on the Apalachicola River, they're saying about 1,000. And then on the Yellow River is a 1,000, and the Scambia River has about 500. Now the Suwannee River, this is one, this is, the Suwannee River, they estimate them to have 10 to 14,000 sturgeon. And that's a pretty good scientific guess as to how many. So you can see uh, the Choctaw River in second place is a distant second, but there are just a bunch of them over there. If you, uh, you can go over there to the uh, bridge right there in Ebro, we've done it before. You park there under the bridge at a little boat ramp. I promise you within 10 or 15 minutes, you're going to see one of them jumping. They just make these fantastic, uh, just graceful jumps and all like a tarpon. And, uh, you know, they're not, uh, they're not sure yet. I've talked to Frank about it. The scientists aren't sure yet exactly why they jump. Uh, one school of thought says well, they're jumping because they're trying to communicate with each other. And by jumping up in the water and then the sound when it hit the water, Another one can hear it down, down river, up river. Another school of thought is saying they're going up in the air, you know, jumping up there to fill up the air bladder 
and come back down. So I, I but they, you know, they can't really tell for sure. That's two schools of thought on it. So just be be aware when you're going full speed on the Choctaw River that uh, you, you just need to be more careful. And also those little feeder creeks, and that's what accident happened last year. Those little feeder creeks that go into the uh, Choctaw River, they're going to be down there too. All right. Now, uh, I didn't on, on Friday's report. I didn't get a chance on the fishing report. I didn't get a chance to really take a look at uh, at uh, the uh, report by Mitch Coleman, and I'm going to go ahead and, and I want to, okay, this is what he talked about Friday. I didn't get a chance to go over it because he's saying, so we're going to do a midweek Mexico beach report. 82 to 83 degrees down there. Uh, the June grass is about seven or eight miles out. It's, it's holding bait good. The kings are biting. If, if you saw that, uh, Tony, that picture, Tony Bass, uh, they caught it. I'm sure he put it in right there to State Park and then go up far before he caught that king. So the kings are here at Panama City, and they're at Mexico Beach. We've got proof of that right there. Uh, snappers have been hit hard. It's interesting now. Snappers have been hit hard in state waters, okay? But still catching keepers. Just go uh, uh, go lighter with the fluorocarbon. Uh, they're getting a little smarter now, so use the fluorocarbon if you can with the leader. And uh, fish up in the column. That's a, that's a great point about snapper fishing, especially with people just starting out. Everybody wants to drop the bottom and fish that bottom right there. And, they don't catch anything. Bring that bait up. Crank it up. First time, just crank. Count your cranks. One, two, three, four, five. And then later on, go up to ten cranks or whatever. Just estimate how deep you are. But you want a lot of times the big red snapper up in the column of the water, not on the bottom. Uh, we fished a lot, a lot of times and, and caught some nice fish up in the column. I've done that on private boats and I've done that on big boats out of Seminole Wind. The same format, just in deeper water. Uh, be sure, uh, one, one thing to do, pick up uh, a clump of grass and shake it over the boat. Mitch, they do this on the boat sometimes. You just shake the grass over the boat, uh, see what falls out of it. If it sometimes it's sea life, you can fish a uh, fish grass bed. If not, now pompano are biting. It says pompano is still biting uh, on the runouts near two cans. So that's interesting to know. I didn't know the pompano was still biting over there in that Mexico Beach area, so that's good and strong. I knew they were out on the Cape, so that's, that's a good report from Mitch. And, you know, midweek fishing, Tuesdays and Wednesdays and Thursdays, excellent fishing. Main thing because the crowds aren't out there. So if you can take a day off or, or get some time to take a half day off and, and just go do some fishing uh, in the middle of the week, I love midweek fishing. I'd, I'd much rather do midweek fishing than, uh, than during on Saturday. And don't, speaking of Saturday, now this coming Saturday will be one week away from the beginning of scallop season. Folks, we're about 10, basically 10 days away from the beginning of scallop season. We haven't really talked about it yet. People ask me about the survey. The survey will not get done. I've talked to uh, Catherine, and they're not coming up from Tampa there uh, to St. Joe Bay until probably next next week. So by the time they get out there next week and get everything done, uh, I'm going to run out of time. I'll tell you more about it later, but uh, we won't have those results in until till later. Uh, we've got to break. Uh, got to break this off now. I want to tell you how much we've enjoyed doing the show. Appreciate you watching the show. Do something good for someone else, and God bless. Thanks for joining us for Panhandle Outdoors with Winston Chester. Panhandle Outdoors features hunting, fishing, and other activities and information to help you enjoy the great outdoors. Join us next time for Panhandle Outdoors.